crucial for HSJ to hold this forum to bring together senior leaders across the health and social care sector and local government to talk about the burning questions which they need to deal with right now because there's a huge amount of change happening at the moment. A lot of people are in new jobs, new organisations, trying out new things in terms of prevention and integration and so they want to hear what's working in different areas as well as to share challenges and do some lobbying of the people who might be able to help influence decisions about those things. Statutory integrated care systems, we've only been in existence for just over a year and yet all of us were reflecting on how far we've already come. How do we make the space for prevention? All of us as system leaders really have a responsibility to create that space rather than wait for somebody else to give it to us. The conversation has been all about the power of integrated care systems and what they can do together with their partners to achieve high quality integrated care for their communities. Reflecting on the difficult circumstances that ICB started in, but also quite optimistic in many respects about some of the brilliant hyperlocal work that gets done in place and neighbourhood. So actually we've gone away with lots of food for thought and a couple of offers of help. Our panel discussion today was about connecting healthcare together and what the role of integrated care boards particularly could be in making that happen. We are all struggling with demand and how we actually integrate our services to best serve the populations that we serve, but also how we start thinking about long-term generational impacts of some of the work that we do rather than just the here and now. We were talking about how we really embed health promotion in the work of integrated care systems. I gave some examples of what we were doing, including some really interesting collaborations with local governments, our councils, education and NHS England, which have helped to really develop the social value and the employment opportunities for people working in North East Essex. There was a lot of focus on prioritisation and then a very interesting discussion on how we know who to listen to. I was talking about the fact that virtual wards are great, but there are two other applications that I would love to see people take up digital home care more. In the management of long-term conditions, keeping people well at home, and in urgent care pathways. 70% of people in a hospital bed are there because of a long-term condition, and some of the best sites in the country are now managing to halve that by giving people simple remote monitoring to do at home. And I'd love to see that scaled. I would love people to be really bold, commit more, and change the way that long-term conditions are managed in this country. Just a small ambition there. We really wanted to learn what the ICS chiefs are facing. So it's about being part of a conversation rather than doing just a hard sell, wanting to highlight that there is some really game-changing technology that we can bring to the table. The ICS Summit draws a really interesting mix of people. Since the pandemic, people are really keen to emulate and scale. That's why it's great to have this group of people together. I was really pleased to be invited to this summit. It's my first one. It's felt really informal. There's been nice networking time. That learning and sharing, which I would never have got if it was just a primary care conference, which is something I'm more used to going to. So I'm hoping I'll get invited again. The number one thing we do is build relationships. When you have to have the difficult conversations, if you've built the relationship of trust, then you can start making things happen together.